What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the Traveler and Sucrose, who are currently the only four star and Nemo characters in Genshin Impact, and talk about why I'll be building one of them and not the other. This video is gonna be focused on free to play players because I think for pay to play players, there's no question which character has more potential. I have to admit that I've been neglecting the Anemo element in my lineup throughout the leveling process to AR35. I'm currently have both the Traveler and Sucrose on my team, both of them are at level 40, which was the bare minimum that I needed to get through some of the Spiral Abyss content. Well, now that I'm at world level four, level 40 characters just aren't cutting it anymore. So I'll be comparing these two characters because they are the most accessible Anemo characters in the game at the moment for free to play players. We also have two other Anemo characters, Gene and Venti, both whom are five star. And if you didn't happen to pull Venti during his limited banner, then you can't get him currently at the moment. So Jean has been my most wanted character since I started the game, and I was finally able to pull her as a very low spending player. So I'll be leveling up both Jean and one of the characters that we're talking about in this video, and I'm gonna explain why. But this video will be a comparison of Sucrose and the Traveler, and is aimed to help you to determine which character is best to level up to fit into your team. This video will not be a build showcase as I currently have both of these characters only at level 40. I recently pulled Sucrose and have been testing her abilities and wanted to keep her at the same level as the Traveler for the purpose of this video. We have a limited number of resources in the game for leveling characters and it is important to not waste these resources on leveling characters past where they need to be, especially if you plan on dropping them from your team at a later time. So if you guys like this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing down below. I put out a video just like this every single week. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about the Traveler's normal and charge attacks. The Traveler's normal attack for an Irewind deals five consecutive strikes. The final strike actually deals a Nemo damage and can therefore trigger the Swirl reaction. Her charge attack will deal two rapid strikes and does not deal any Nemo damage. The Traveler's sword attacks are swift, but underwhelming. There are better damage dealers, and in my opinion, the 4-star and Nemo characters are more of a support type. Because Sucrose is a Catalyst user, her normal and charge attacks are going to deal elemental damage. Her normal attack deals 4 consecutive strikes, each of which deal a Nemo damage. You'll see why that is important in a bit. Her charged attack is an AoE Animo Burst, sending enemies away, which can be very useful for launching enemies in the spiral abyss or off of cliffs. I don't think there is a real advantage of a sword user over a catalyst user at the moment, but Sucrose can perform ranged attacks, which is useful to have on your team. Traveler's elemental skill is the Palm Vertex. Holding down this skill is going to bring enemies in and cause AoE and Nemo damage. When skill duration ends, enemies are going to be thrown with more Nemo AoE damage. This skill will cause the swirl effect and is very useful in areas like the spiral abyss or near cliffs where you want to launch enemies away. If the vertex comes in contact with hydro or pyro or any other element, it will deal additional elemental damage of that type. In order to access this launching effect, you have to use Traveler's elemental skill while Sucrose can do this with a standard charge attack. However, with a five to eight second cooldown, this is quick to access. I do like this skill because it will draw in some enemies before launching, which can be helpful when enemies aren't easily grouped. Sucrose's elemental skill, A Stable, Anemo Hypostasis, pulls enemies in and does a large hit of Anemo damage. This skill covers a large radius and is great for crowd control and triggering elemental combos. However, this skill is short in duration and has a long cooldown of 15 seconds. This is best used when other elemental interactions are already applied to deal additional swirl damage. Traveler's ultimate, the Gust Surge, produces a tornado that will absorb the first element that it comes into contact with and do a decent amount of damage. It has a relatively low energy cost of 60 and cooldown of 15 seconds. This skill can be useful if you get overwhelmed and want to get enemies away. Fuji! 
Now Sucrose's Elemental Burst, Forbidden Creation, also deals continuous Anemo damage over 6 seconds, the same duration as Traveler's Ultimate, but does do considerably more damage. The skill is amazing for crowd control as it will pull in enemies. This is typically much more useful in situations such as the Spiral Abyss or any time fight as enemies are grouped together and stay close by so large amounts of damage can be inflicted by your team, especially if you swap Sucrose for your main DPS while her ultimate is going. Compared to Traveler, this burst has a significantly higher energy cost at 80 and cooldown at 20 seconds. Let's talk about the remaining skills because I believe this is where these two characters are really separated. Up until this point, character choice largely depends on your playstyle and what type of support you want on your team. We discussed this one, but the final hit of Traveler's normal attack will be dealt as an emo damage and could trigger a swirl reaction. This is useful for dealing extra damage with normal attacks with no energy cost. At Ascension 4, Traveler will have some self-healing, which can obviously be upgraded, but the returns are pretty minimal at the start. Now Sucrose. So the first talent we did not discuss, Catalyst Conversion, increases all other party members' elemental mastery by 50 for 8 seconds when they have a matching element to the element in her swirl reaction. This can be a huge boost in damage to your team. Next we have Mollus Favonius. With this talent, when she uses her skill or burst attacks, everyone's elemental mastery is increased by 20% of Sucrose's elemental mastery for 8 seconds. So this is stacked on the flat 50 elemental mastery provided by her previous passive. Her final talent is going to be a crafting talent and is not a huge deal but could lead to a good payoff over time. So Traveler's skill and ultimate are quicker to access than Sucrose's. Her ultimate is going to push enemies away as the tornado like attack happens. This is where I feel she personally falls short as you progress through the game. In general, especially when fighting mobs, I want to keep everyone as close together as possible and combine all of my damage into a concentrated area as most fights in the game are timed. There's going to be a huge discrepancy in talents that can be collected for free-to-play players. With Traveler, you're going to unlock constellations just by playing the game and increasing adventure rank. But obviously, unlocking Sucrose's constellations will require multiples and gotcha pulls. I'm not going to go through all of these, but Traveler's Constellations are going to increase her energy recharge, increase damage, and increase defense. Sucrose's first Constellation is great if you can get it, as it will give a second charge on her elemental skill, allowing her to deal significantly more damage. Her remaining Constellations are going to increase attack and damage, as well as decrease cooldown time. These are not essential, but the additional charge on her elemental skill can be useful and is not impossible to obtain as a free-to-play player. To get around the cooldown times of Sucrose, the Sacrificial Fragments Catalyst is great, as using an elemental skill gives it a 40% chance of ending its own cooldown. This will mean that about half of the time she will have that second charge on her elemental skill even without any constellations. For Traveler, several swords are good depending if you want to build her for damage or for energy recharge. As far as artifacts for these support builds, there are several options. In my opinion, both Sucrose and Traveler will use similar artifacts. The Exile set for increased energy recharge and the Instructor set for increased elemental mastery are both great options. The best set debatably for these characters is the Veridescent Venerer. This set increases anemo damage by 15% and swirl damage by 60% and decreases elemental resistance to the element infused in the swirl by an additional 40% for 10 seconds. That is a huge bonus and can really make the other members of your team shine. This set is the true definition of a support DPS artifact set. Sucrose also makes activating elemental pillars and farming dandelion seeds a breeze because her elemental skill is not needed to do this, just her basic attack. Because of the crowd control that Sucrose can do, as well as all of the elemental mastery bonuses her character provides, I will be building Sucrose alongside the gene I just pulled. First, I'm going to be building Jean because I've waited two months for her. Sorry, Sucrose. 
Although Sucrose may honestly be a better addition to my team. What are your guys' thoughts? Are you using either the Traveler or Sucrose as a Nemo character? Are you lucky enough to have Venti or Jean? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you for the next video. Peace.